Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about strategies on how you increase the number of returning customers, boost customer lifetime value and decrease churn rates. As you know, ads are getting more expensive. In 2024, tracking will become more difficult than it ever was. And obviously, you want to make sure that you have a lot of returning customers because that's the best customer you want to get in your business. So with me on the show, I have Fiona Stevens. She's the Director of Marketing at Loyalty Line. With over 15 years of experience in marketing, she has worked in-house and agency side across many functions, including PR, SEO, content, and most important, loyalty. She has specialized in marketing for the retail and e-commerce space for the past decade. So let's welcome Fiona to the show. Hi, Fiona. How are you today? Hi, I'm very good. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me. Fiona, let's dive right into it. So returning customers, obviously, it's a very important part of every business and more important so than it ever was. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of merchants struggle to get the strategy right there. Um, tell me a bit of what you see when customers come to your clients, come to your site, what kind of mistakes they have done in the past? Yeah, I think... Um... Traditionally, you know, when you're trying to grow a business, when you're perhaps the first year, second year, you're really focused on acquisition. You're focusing on getting your brand out there. You're focusing on trying to get new customers through the door. And it's really easy to forget that actually once you've got a single customer, they could be a returning customer. They could repeat purchase. So I think the biggest error is actually not shifting any focus away from acquisition towards retention for quite a long time, which is up and running. You know, that's a mistake we see often. And as you've already mentioned, that might have, you know, acquisition focus, it works, it's necessary, but it doesn't work as well as it used to. You know, I think if I get these stats right, back in, I think it's 2013, you lost around $9 per customer that you acquired new. Now it's up to around $29, $30. And the, you know, the cost of acquisition is just increasing all the time. So yes, you need new customers to come through the door, but you need to, at some point, and quite an early point, shift that focus towards retention so that you can start bringing customers back who already know your brand, have bought from you once and had quite a good experience. It's going to be far easier to convert those customers again. So, yeah, I think the biggest challenge is just realizing when it's time to make that switch and making the switch, not not 100% switch, of course, just, you know, expanding your focus, doing that before you're too reliant on discounting, before you become known for there's 25% off every single purchase for both new and returning customers. I think that's the big challenge. Mm -hmm. But stunt about the number that you just said. So it's about $30 to acquire a new customer. And a lot of business do, do not even have the profit margin. So it will be difficult to break um, even on, on the second purchase. Now, what are different ways on how to increase your customer rates? Obviously, you can have different strategies. And I said discounting is probably not the best thing to do. So what would be your best take on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, discounting is a necessary evil. Everybody has to do it. It's often the best way to get a new customer in the first time. But uh, you know, we've just um, witnessed Black Friday and pretty much Black Friday month or Black Friday quarter where people would, I saw some discounts over 50%. You know, you really don't want to be doing that because it's going to erode your profit margins over and over again. And if you're having to do it all year round, you're going to get yourself in a bit of a pickle. So I think having a way of bringing returning customers back all year round is really important. And those returning customers are far likely to pay full price. So it's a bit of a, a value exchange. You know, what can you give those returning customers in return for their loyalty and their repeat purchases? And there we get into the realm of things like loyalty points and rewards. And uh, it's a bit, you know, and lots, lots of people are members of lots of different loyalty programs and they don't use them properly. But done right, it's a really, really good way of keeping in touch with your customers in between those purchases. So, you know, if you can incentivize them to follow you on social media to make sure you're keeping in touch, if you can incentivize them to share their data, perhaps by filling in, a, you know, points in exchange for um, a quiz or filling in a profile or something like that. Again, you've got another mechanism, you've got more information on them, another mechanism to keep in touch. And that's particularly important as well where uh, privacy is becoming a challenge, you know, with cookies changing, with GDPR, with, you know, different legislations in different states, it's becoming harder and harder to get information that you can then use to personalize your email or your SMS strategy. So if you can use something like loyalty points in exchange for completing that profile or taking that quiz, you start gathering that information that it's getting harder and harder to acquire. So again, just having 
those points of rewards to keep people engaging in between purchases is really effective. Um, I think you can also, going back to the discounting point, you can use a lot of program or points and rewards and things to um, to replace those discounts. So rather than running a 25% off sale on, say, Earth Day, if you're a sustainable um, fashion company, for example, you could run a double points day or a bonus points day, something like that, which still brings people back. It's still, it's a high value for them. They can unlock more points if they make a purchase over that period. But it means that you don't have to use a discount and it means that they're building up their points balance really fast. So they're more likely to come back and unlock a reward and make that repeat purchase again sooner. Mm. So I mean, there's a myriad of ways. But I think you gave a very nice example there, Reservers. They obviously, um... To get customers back, you need to build up trust. You need to build up loyalty with that. Um, also, you need to build up a connection between the customer and your brand. Um, can you give me some examples of customers of yours on how they do that? Yeah, this is actually a growing area of loyalty programs that I'm really, really enjoying watching. But they, as you say, it's, it's really important to connect with customers emotionally and build up trust. And there's been a lot of... Um, bad press over the last couple of years, particularly for beauty and fashion brands in terms of, well, you say you're being sustainable, you say you're being ethical, but your production methods just haven't caught up. Mm -hmm. So I think it, there's a really strong play here um, in terms of counteracting that um, greenwashing, I think it's called, um, and showing that your customers that you are serious about what you claim to support. Um, so really nice examples we've got, uh, there's a, a pet food brand called Ed Garden Cooper. Now, if you um, if you earn enough points to claim a reward, you can claim a reward for yourself. You can get a money off your next purchase voucher, or you could buy a doggy dinner or a dog shelter. <laughs> um, you know, you can give back dog lovers everywhere buying dog food for their own pet. If they earn enough points, rather than using the reward themselves, they can use it to support something, a charity, a, a trust, a fund that they care about. Um, we also have Wild Nutrition, uh, so they're obviously a nutrition brand, um, but for them, you can redeem your rewards in the form of a charitable donation, and that's to, you could you can plant trees, you can support an ocean charity. It's, um, again, the charities tie closely to the kinds of products they're selling and the impact of the creation of those products, but it allowed people to, A, see that the company cares about the same causes, but B, contribute to those causes at the same time. So mm. yeah, my favorite developments actually. I think it's a very interesting development because um, beside of discounts and getting points, it sort of makes the customer a hero, something that they can break about in front of their friends who says that I just contributed to something, to some cause, so I, I don't know planting a tree or something like that, uh, which is a completely different emotional level of binding your, your customer to your brand. Um, I think the biggest risk, and, and talk me through it, um, is a churn rate, losing customers. Um, tell me a little bit about it and, and how do you prevent that? Yeah, absolutely. So you're, the customers who are at risk of churning, they're really the, the people that haven't returned to make a repeat purchase in the time frame that you would expect them to. And that time frame is going to be very different for different types of brands. So for example, if I sell handbags, I'm really only going to expect somebody to come back and buy a handbag once, possibly twice a year. Whereas if I'm selling shampoo, I should be replenishing that once every, well, it depends how much hair you have, but once every, maybe one to two months. So you can quite easily see your cohorts and see who who is returning and repurchasing in the way that you'd expect. And who's dropping off? Who's becoming at risk? And you can quite easily catch those at risk people before they churn. So once you've got your segment, that's the time when you want to be encouraging them to come back. You could be introducing them to a new product range that they haven't seen. You could be crediting them with some surprise points that they weren't expecting. It might be that they've actually got a reward they could redeem, but they've just forgotten about it. So, you know, you could be using reward available nine day emails to just keep in touch and remind people that you're there. And I think the more people you can get into your loyalty program, and again, you can incentivize account creation with points to get people in, but once they're in, you can send those regular emails. You can schedule monthly point statements or reward available reminders, that kind of thing to stay top of mind and make sure people don't forget about you. But if you are sort of just getting started and you don't have that yet, 
then yeah, identifying that at risk segment, figuring out how at risk are they have they actually churned? Is it going to be hard to bring them back, or could you just use something like a bonus points day? Um, and and then sort of adapting your strategy for each different cohort is a good way to bring them back. I think subscriber churn is probably the biggest problem, especially where you have again pet foods, um, food and beverage, you know, coffee subscriptions. So a lot of alcohol subscriptions over um, the last few years, anything where you're subscribed to a product, the churn rate is actually incredibly high because more often than not, we sign up to a subscription when there's an offer. And then when things get a bit tight, we look at all our subscriptions. I was looking at mine the other day thinking, do I need most of these things to be delivered every single month? Probably not. So you, when you do that inventory, you want to make sure that your subscription stands out as being really high value and that perhaps not just as a monthly it arrives at the door, but what additional value are you adding? So we've got brands who have specific subscriber tiers. And if you're in that subscriber tier, you might actually get a free sample of a new product that other um, that non-subscribers don't get in their box. You might get um, early access to new to sales or to new products as they launch. You might get um, invitations to events or exclusive content, other kind of experience-based rewards that come with that subscriber tier. So when somebody's doing that check of, do I need this? Do I need that? Which am I going to get rid of? Yours actually stands out as offering something a little bit more special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Loyalty Lion is around for a long time. It's probably one of the most well-known loyalty apps in the e-commerce space. Um, tell me a little bit, I want to touch on the technical side of it, coming from the strategy, you know, looking, how does the day-to-day -day work in your app look like for a store manager, for an e-commerce manager, for a marketing manager? Yeah, so it's pretty, um, pretty easy to use, to be honest, quite straightforward. So you have the flexibility to set up your program as you, you wish. We actually um, design your loyalty page for you. So when you're on board with Loyalty Line, we'll work with you to say, okay, this is a loyalty page, we know what components are the most important. We know what you need to have on your page. So you let us know your logo, your brand colors, your fonts, et cetera, icons you want to use, and we will design and build your page for you. It's then up to you in the back end. Um, and as I say, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's up to you to work with our onboarding team to decide details like, well, how many points do you want to, to give per purchase? How many points do you want to give per action and which actions actually do you want to reward so you might be heavily focused on instagram and tiktok on your social media strategy so you would set up so that you're rewarding x number of points for follows on each of those things but you might leave off facebook or twitter because you're not focused on those channels and um, you may have a reviews platform so you would decide how many points you want to reward to incentivize a review all well, that kind of thing is um it's really easy to do and it's up to you how you want to do it, what you want to award points for. Um, similarly, tiers are very easy to set up. You just, again, it's your decision how, what uh, benefits you put in each tier. So you might say, right, but to bottom tier, I'm going to give free shipping and uh, bonus points days. Then the middle tier, I'm going to add on early access to sales and early access to new products. And then for my top tier, I'm going to add, um, what have I not said? Um, exclusive access to events or something along those lines. So again, your, your strategy and what you want to include is, is yours to decide, but it's, well, would obviously be there to, to guide and support those decisions, but it's very easy to then just build it in to the platform. Um, we have our integrations space, so we integrate with most of the key Shopify tools, um, Klaviyo, Akendo, Attentive, and Gorgeous are probably our strongest integration, um, but we integrate with lots of other ESPs and reviews providers and subscription services as well. Um, the connection there is is quite simple, um, or, or that pick the ones that you want to, to integrate. Um, and then it's reporting really. Um, so we actually, we've actually just launched some new dashboards, which makes our reporting a whole lot easier, but it's, we wanted to make sure that you've gone to the effort of launching and um, building a loads program. You've gone to the effort of managing it. We want you to be able to see the results of that effort really clearly. We want you to be able to prove the value 
of your program so that when it comes around, you know, you've been running it six months, you can say, look what I've achieved. Not, well, I'm not really sure. It's another marketing, marketing activity that I'm running, but it might be working. It might not, you know, that's a real challenge in most areas of marketing. So we want to make sure that you can prove that value. So we've got, um, you're able to compare your non-members with um, active and non-active members. So you can really compare the value of a Lord's Program member who is taking advantage of all of your points and rewards with a non-active member and with a non-member. And then you can do that across lifetime value, repeat purchase rates, all those kinds of things. So you can very quickly start to see, okay, a Lord's Program member is spending more. They are purchasing more frequently. They are more valuable. And you're able to see how much, what portion of your revenue as a store can be attributed to your launch program as well. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think within the back end, you, it's really yours for the taking. There's everything from quite an easy setup where you get to design a program using your knowledge of your customer and what they're likely to engage with, um, through to being able to report on that quite effectively. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that you are helping in building the loyalty page um, because I think that's where people struggle the most with. Um, you see all these features, but how do you get it together? And if you have somebody on your side helping with that, I think that's a huge benefit. You touched already on a couple of industries. You talked about pet food, about fashion. Um, who's your perfect customer? Or are there any industries where you would say loyalty is a little bit more difficult than others? Give me an example. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely most suited to stores who have a high repeat purchase rate so you know as i say something like a handbag people will repeat purchase fairly regularly but you're looking at a slightly longer purchase cycle than some of the more uh, consumables does that mean that if i'm a luxury jewelry brand who's only going to sell something once every three years that a launch program isn't for me not necessarily because it's engagement in between those purchases you know Yes, we want to increase repeat purchase rates. Yes, we want to to get returning customers back as frequently as possible. But even with a luxury brand or a, a slower um, purchase cycle, keeping in touch in between purchases, staying top of mind and showing customers that you have things in common and that you care about the same things is really important so that when they do shop again, it's still with you. So... Mm-hmm. I mean, I would say everybody, but so certainly for quicker results, it is the highly repeat purchasable product. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. We already touched on the onboarding process, but tell me a little bit about your pricing structure. Pricing, yes. So um, we have lots of different plans. We do have a free plan on the Shopify app store where you can um, start with the basics, really. You know, as you say, we've been around a while. We know what a really basic program looks like and needs to work effectively. And um, we there's also a two week free trial so you can um, get set up. Obviously a Lord's program takes time to, to set up and manage. So two weeks is perhaps not long enough to see whether things work, but it is long enough to log in, play around, see what building your program was look like. And um, so yes, free plan available on Shopify. And then our paid plans start from $159 a month and they go up from there. And it's really based on how many orders you're processing a month. So we don't believe in charging by members because you could have 500,000 members, but if only 100,000 of them buy from you that month, then you're paying an awful lot for people who aren't purchasing. So we're based on the number of orders and obviously as the number of orders goes up, so does the, the fee, but you unlock a whole lot more features the more you invest. Mm, makes perfect sense. Before we come to the end of our coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't touched on yet? Um, I think just your returning customer rate is obviously, for us, it's the, the pinnacle of your growth. You know, you're having to spend more to acquire. You've got these existing customers who already know you, hopefully already trust you. It should be far easier to win them back. So um, that returning customer rate should be your north star but i think it's easy to think of loyalty and loyalty programs as the standalone activity a bit of an add-on something to come back to you later and i think the the right way to look at it is actually loyalty could be the thing that is adding power to all of your other marketing so we've already talked about using uh loyalty points to incentivize social media follows and shares you know you could be 
contributing to your social media strategy. You could be using it to personalize your emails more effectively. You could be using it to improve your help desk experience. You know, if a customer support advisor can see your loyalty status and see your points balance, they can perhaps sweeten a slightly sour situation with some extra points. There's lots of different parts of your marketing strategy that loyalty could actually support rather than it being a separate activity. So I think if you are looking at your returning customers, if you're looking at retention or loyalty, don't look at it in a silo is the most important thing. Yeah, I think having returning customers is, should be the goal of every business out there because always chasing for new customers, for new buyers, it's not only exhausting and expensive, but it's, it's not really a business. So you need to have people that trust you and come back. Where can people find out more about you guys? Yes. So um, if you head to loyaltyline.com, you can find out everything that you need to know about us. You can also book a time to talk with us as well. And somebody can give you a tour of the platform in a bit more detail. Excellent. I will put the links in the show notes and you're just one click away. Fiona, thanks so much for your time today. I think it was a very good overview why loyalty and building a prop program around that is so important. And I hope a lot of people will check it out. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.